Larry Holmes once said that Ernie Shaver's punches were like a train going at 60 miles per hour, whereas Mike Tyson's were like a sports car, lighter but going at 100. And I think that's a good analogy to just show that it's really hard, if not impossible, to quantify punching power. There is something of a magical effect when we see a guy's lights get turned out. There's no specific build to generate power, as this collage of KO Kings illustrates. We are missing somebody there, though. Somebody who very well may have the most legitimate claim to the title of hardest puncher in boxing history. Bob Fitzsimmons. This was a former middleweight who one-shotted the lineal heavyweight champion. Aussie Jim Hall was something of a mirror image of Bob Fitzsimmons. Tall, rangy, big punching. These guys fought a number of times. Jim Hall was a bit of a wild man. He liked to drink outside. He liked a fight outside of the ropes. By the time they fought for a sixth time, it's fair to say they were probably sick of each other. There was apparently a bribe in one of their fights. Dodgy dealings. It all came down to this one in 1893, New Orleans. Just lasted four rounds. Jim Hall, in the third round, pressed his advantage, made Fitzsimmons back up, seemed to have the upper hand. Crafty Bob had spied something though. The fourth started in a similar vein to the way that the third had ended, Hall pressing his advantage, sensing he's about to make the first real big dent. That's when Fitzsimmons took a step back, made his distance incorrect and just walked him right onto a pile driver of a right hook. Hall was said to fall down and was a long time in recovering. Peter Maher, Irish last name, was a legitimate heavyweight of the day, about six foot, a good trim 180 pounds, and a massive puncher. If there was one thing Maher had going for him, it was power. Now Fitzsimmons, of course, was an incredible puncher as well, but he also had the craft. There is never gonna be one of the world's best punchers who doesn't have that necessary skill. And it was Crafty Bob again with his counters that had the final say in this one. 1896, it was labeled as the unofficial heavyweight championship. Took place just outside of Langtry, Texas, near the river Rio Grande. They'd done this to try and escape authorities. And the kinetoscope, the early motion pictures device, was brought to try and film and then possibly give the fighters a share of the viewings. It was too cloudy, though, so it couldn't be used. Fitzsimmons, possibly slightly irritated that he hadn't been getting his share of fight film revenue, was in a prickly mood. They had fought before and Fitzsimmons had dealt a bit of a drubbing over about 10 to 12 rounds, I believe. In this rematch, perhaps a little bit anxious, Maher <coughs> went for it early. He did the exact same thing that Jim Hall did in 1893 in the fourth round. Fitzsimmons saw the same mistake and landed the exact same punch, a right hook on the point of the chin said to be identical, and so were the effects. 1897, just the year after, Carson City, Nevada. Bob Fitzsimmons gets his shot at the official heavyweight championship of the world, held by the somewhat smug James J. Corbett, known as Gentleman, the guy who had dethroned John L. Sullivan. Fitzsimmons didn't like the guy, he saw a pompous ass, and he wanted to take him out. There is footage of this historic fight, and it's pretty poor footage, has to be said. It is 1897, but in it you can still see the fleet feet of Gentleman Jim, one of the great movers in the heavyweight division. 
And what was different about this fight, this was a fight that Bob Fitzsimmons was not in control of. Usually the tactical master setting up traps, walking you onto counters. It was Corbett's feet that had him confused, that helped floor him in the sixth round, Fitzsimmons scrambling around the champion's ankles. Managed to get back up with cracked lips, with a bloody nose, continued to press the action. Rounds 12, pretty good. Round 13, better. He's starting to land his sledgehammer blows to the chin. Round 14, and Corbett now starting to really feel the pace. Fitzsimmons switches to southpaw. And then sinks in a left hand to the solar plexus that finishes the job. And he becomes heavyweight champion.